And Father, we praise you right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit lead us in this Bible study to reveal your will into our life. We thank you for the script that we shall get from your word. We thank you for uh, allowing your word to be able to be applied to our life this day, oh Lord. And we just thank you right now, God, the joy that we shall get when we understand what it is that you are saying unto us. We praise you even the more right now, God. Just touch the hearts and the minds of your people right now and begin to transform them. We give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God um, once again for you coming out to Bible study. Um, we're talking about faith promise. Um, faith promise. And on Sunday, we was coming out of the book of uh, Kings. But I want to start in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 38. Um, because there's, a, there's something I want to show you. Um, in Luke 6 and 38. And it's on the board right now. And it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give it into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. But here's a, a simple principle that if we get it, we understand it. It says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I mean, if we just keep it simple as it is, give and it shall be given unto you. That's a promise. Faith has promised us. God has promised us through faith that if we activate our faith in our giving, whatever we give, it's going to be given back to you. You should be able to shout right there for the fact that knowing that I, I, don't, I don't sow it just so I can get it back, but I sow it because the Lord told me to sow it. It is his word. I'm just being obedient to his word. I'm really activating my faith because faith promises so much. And when faith promises you something, you can be guaranteed that faith will deliver. For it said give. And so when you give it, you need to give out of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give out of faith. Give and it shall be given unto you. You give and it shall be given back unto you. That is a promise. And God watches his word to perform it. He doesn't lie about his word. And so therefore, whatever God is saying, he's going to do it. He's going to accomplish whatever he set out to do. So we should be excited right there. The fact that not only, because when God, when you give it, when you take that seed, because we was talking about a seed. When you take that seed out of your harvest, the harvest is what you got in your hand. But then you take that harvest and present it as a seed. And when you present your seed, hallelujah, God takes your seed and then he multiplies your seed with another harvest. Because the seed got to come out of the harvest. Whatever he has given unto you, you take a portion of it. You take a seed out of it and you offer it back unto him. And then watch what he does with it. That seed, that given, then turns into something good. It's a good measure. And not only just a good measure, but it's a measure that's been pressed down. It's not only been pressed down, but then been shaken together. And not only is shaken together, now it begins to run over. Oh, goodness. Hallelujah. You ain't had all that when you was given, but faith promised you more. Oh, Lord, how I say that again? I say faith promised you more. If I could get Sister Washington to go in that sour room and, and, and change those slides for me, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And so when you give, God going to compound his giving back to you to the point that it's not only just a good measure, but it also got some added stuff to it. What did it say? Press down, shake together, run it over. Oh, wow. So when you give it to God, when you put it into God's hand, God's hand is bigger than your hand. You, you, you know, you ever compare your hand to a child's hand? You ever seen your kid grab a, a bunch of candy with a hand, but then you grab it? It's much more. I told you, it, it, kids, y'all should, if, if someone offered y'all something, let your parents grab it for you. Yeah. Because their hand is bigger. What are you saying? When you put it in God's hand, God's hand is much bigger than your hand. So he can give you back way more than what you put in his. Ooh. So who hand we need to have it in is God's hand. Okay. So faith promises us 
that it's not only when you give, you want to get a good measure, but it's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and it's going to run it over. So it's compounded. You cannot, I, I truly believe, believe, be God in giving. You can't. Because whatever you give, he got to give more. Because if not, he's not God. He's bigger than you are. That's you right. are. That's right. Oh, come on. He had way more than you have. If he's going to give you back the same measure you give, then you might as well keep it in. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. But I'm going to put in a hand who can multiply. That's right. <laughs> okay. Faith promise is what we're talking about. Let's go to uh, Matthew's, the ninth chapter. Start at verse 20. And watch how faith promise. Y'all know this familiar story, right? This is the woman with the issue of blood. And it said, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Who? Isn't that something? So this woman started doing what? Activating what? Her faith. Her faith, right? Yeah. Because her faith had promised her something. Her faith had, see, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She had to hear about Jesus in order for her to have faith in touching him. Come on. Can I get an amen there? Amen. amen. All right, so watch in verse 20. He said, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him, touched the hem of his garment. She activated her faith because her faith promised her, if you touch him, you want to get your healing. Watch verse 21. For she said within herself, that's faith talking to her. She say within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be what? Me. That's faith talking right there, right? Faith that promise her. Inside her head, faith that promise her. Inside her heart, faith that promise her. Inside her spirit, faith that promise her. If you just touch him, you want to be made whole. Watch what happens when you activate your faith. Faith to do the, uh, the miraculous in your life. Amen. The impossible in your life. By putting your faith in the right thing, which is God. And when she put her faith in God, hallelujah, God healed her. Amen. Now this woman, y'all know her history is that she went around for a while. She had this issue for 12 long years. He said it was a disease, right? Didn't they say that? Yes. Which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. You know, when you think about a disease, you, you, you think it's, uh, uh, um, uh, it's chronic, right? You think it's long term, right? You think I'm not getting rid of it when you call it a disease. It's not like I got a cold. This is a disease. You know, we get a cold and then we get over a cold. But usually when you get a disease, it seems like it stays a long time. You know, you, 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 you have a lot more fear attached to a disease, right? Amen. And so she was walking around in fear for 12 years. But someone gave her a word. Someone had to tell her that Jesus was able to heal people. She had to hear about Brother Iron Bartimaeus. Uh, she had to hear about uh, 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 someone who had been touched by him. Because it stirred something inside of her. Like she was like, you know what? The Bible say that he has given us all a measure of faith. So faith is there. We just got to learn how to activate it. And when you know the promise of it, you will do it more. That's right. So she went out and she began to activate it. But watch how she's talking to herself. Watch how faith begin to talk back to her. For she say within herself. Now that woman been talking to herself might have been for a while. But she had a response like this. She said, if I may touch his garment, if I could just get close enough, she didn't even know right she didn't want to get to touch it. She said, if I may touch his garment, she said, I don't know what the crowd is, but they ain't going to stop me from going. I don't know who's going to show up, but they ain't going to stop me from showing up. Come on. She said, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be what? I shall be whole. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Faith got a way of making you complete, making you whole, bringing your, your dreams and, and your desire up to manifestation. 
She said, if I but touch his garment. She said, he ain't got to speak to me. Because faith has already been talking to me. I already heard that he's able. I already know that he will do it. I know he's a God that's above and not beneath. Amen. I know he's a God that shall deliver me. I know what he can do. I heard too many testimonies of him. Come on, this ain't the first time she had uh, she heard about God. Come on. She was Jewish, right? She was raised up believing in God. But here come God in the flesh. Here come Jesus showing up on the scene. I don't know about you, but after that, once you activate your faith like that, you can encourage somebody else to activate their faith. Because once she got healed, guess what? She had to go by and tell people, I'm healed now. Because back in that day, she had to go around and say she was unclean. According to the Levitical law. That she was uh, she had an issue of blood, so she couldn't be inside the camp. She had to be outside of the camp. And she couldn't touch other people because she would be, make them unclean. So she had to go around and say, unclean, unclean, unclean. But now she said, look, I ain't got to say that no more. I want y'all to know I can touch you today. Because God didn't touch me. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I, I got faith that he healed me. He can heal you too. Yeah. Yes. You ain't got to be outside the camp anymore. You can be in the camp now. You can enjoy the benefits of being among others. Faith, promise of that. Faith is just touching. If you just reach out there and touch the hill, it's gone. You ain't got to go hug it. Just touch the hill. Hallelujah. He ain't got to look at it. Just reach out. He's going to know you did it anyhow. God know when we activate our faith. <laughs> Watch verse 22. And she, but Jesus turned him about. And when he had saw her, because in another uh, 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 version of this, uh, uh, Jesus said, who touched me? And then, and then the, the, uh, his disciples were like, what do you mean who touched you? You crowd around people. Somebody going to touch you, Jesus. But he said, no, I felt there was a special touch. I felt faith promise somebody something. Somebody, faith was talking to them. And, and, and telling them, believe in him. Believe in the power of him. So she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, right? And Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, what? Yeah. Be of good comfort. In other words, he said, your promise is here. <laughs> he said, daughter, be of good What else could comfort her but healing? The promise of healing manifested is our comfort. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. The daughter, be of good comfort. That's the only thing that's going to comfort her. She didn't want to have another doctor report telling her what her disease is. She didn't want to have another doctor tell her to jump through all these hoops. She wanted to be comfort. And her comfort was in the promise that her faith had told her, touch him and you shall be whole. Hold up. Touch you and you shall be whole. And I shall be whole. Wait a minute. That just didn't incorporate it, just her issue. That was all of her. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to talk right here. See, sometimes we limit God just to a disease. But God is above and beyond just a disease. Amen. You may have came to God. She may have came to God just for a disease. But in her spirit, in her faith, she was saying, I'm going to be whole. Whole incorporate everything. Not just the issue of blood, hallelujah, but her mindset was changing now. Come on, you can be healed and still have a messed up mindset. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Not only was that, watch this. When that whole incorporate her finance. <laughs> because she was about to spin out by now. Yeah. 12 years of going to doctors, 12 years of going to root doctors, 12 years of going to, uh, to witch doctors and all other kind of doctors there was. People telling her to do the, you know how y'all had them home remedies? Hmm. Grandma told you this, auntie told you that, you were going to try all these things. 
Hallelujah. And she was just going around all these different people. Because she had a hope of, 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 of having to be comfort. But she didn't get comfort in these things. Finally, it showed up. Jesus said, daughter, be of good comfort. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited right there. Yeah. Be of good comfort. Hallelujah. In other words, what you have exercised in your heart, what you have exercised, faith has promised you, is now manifest. You want to feel good now. She could not but feel good. Amen. Hold up. You mean to tell me I, I had to walk in the crowd saying nothing clean, but when I leave out the crowd, I ain't had to say nothing, but Jesus is good. God is awesome. God is wonderful. Come on. That's all she had to say. Well, like, look here. Before she had to go out there and describe who she was based on the disease. But Jesus said, I'm about to make you whole. And you ain't going to be labeled by your disease. You ain't going to be labeled by your sickness. You ain't going to be labeled by your circumstance. You ain't going to be labeled by what you're going through. You're going to be whole again. Don't you know he come to make us whole? Yeah. Because each one of us may be missing something. And he's coming to make us whole in all aspects of our life. Not just one. Come on, you might have been keen to Jesus on that one issue, but Jesus want to make you whole in all issues. Amen. That woman spoke something, though. She said, I shall be made whole. I don't even know if she understood the power of what she was saying. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we use the word whole there. You might be thinking, well, I, I just want to be healed. But heal where? Heal in what? <laughs> heal in what you have been, uh, 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 what they have diagnosed you with? Or heal in the stuff that they don't, you don't even know is inside of you? Come on. You might have went to the doctor for this particular reason, but there might be other stuff he didn't even know about. But she said, I want to be whole completely. I was like, wow. Okay. Daughter, be a good comfort. Thy what? Thy faith has what? Made thee whole. Oh, come on. Faith promise up and faith deliver. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Thy faith has made thee whole. It ain't say Jesus has made you whole, but he said thy faith has made you whole. Because you had faith in him, he delivered. Because you had faith in him, he manifested. But it required faith to do it. Just because you call on his name, don't mean anything going to happen. You got to have faith in that name. That is above all other names. That is able to deliver. Yes. Okay. I got one amen. Praise God. That faith has made thee whole. And the woman was what? She was made whole from that hour. Oh, wow. You mean to tell me it ain't took her no two years later? No. God made a whole deal? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because she said, I touch him, I'm going to be made whole. She already done spoken. Speak those things that be not as though they were. I'm calling in existence. I'm saying life and not death. And because she was speaking it, out of her mouth, manifest these things. Because what she was confessing now, she started professing in her walk. She could have stayed home and talk about it, but she said, I'm going to show up. Yeah. See, we're good at talking about it, but we don't want to show up in it. <laughs> Activate. Whew. Okay, all right. Uh, I guess they ain't going to shout with me today. But be a good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Wow. I, I, I'm pretty sure in that hour, the devil tried to come to her. Yeah. Amen. Okay. And tell her you ain't whole. Mm -hmm. See, I think a lot of people come and have their deliverance, but let the devil convince them out of it. Came to the altar. Receive a healing. Receive a deliverance. Re receive a way out of things. But before that, before that hour was over, they didn't convince themselves otherwise. She said, I ain't about to convince myself otherwise. Devil, get ye behind me. Amen. I'm going home. I'm going home praising God. I'm going home giving him the praise all day long. Amen. Every time he said, you ain't here, I'm here. Hallelujah. 
See, the Bible says give no place to the devil. We give places in our mind. We have received our healing. Faith has promised you deliverance, and you got your deliverance, but then you allow the enemy to come and talk to you to convince you out of it. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen. How are you going to get that? How is it going to manifest in your life? That's not even possible. With God, all things are possible. <laughs> Everything. Hallelujah. I said, with God, all things are possible. Yeah. I'm not limiting God. Hallelujah. Just because you're trying to limit it, I'm not going to limit him. I'm going to speak it, even though it ain't manifested yet. I'm still going to speak it as it's already manifest. Yes. Ooh, I felt that one up in me. Hallelujah. Because he said, I walk by faith. faith. And not by sight. And sight is sensory. It ain't about what you hear, what you see. Hallelujah. What you taste and smell. Uh, those things can mess with you. Because those sensory allow you to be convinced otherwise. But I got to believe in the unseen. Because faith work in the unknown. What is known of God though. You can't see it, but it's there. Because faith is speaking to the unseen to bring it into the seen. Yes. Oh, God, hallelujah. He, he, faith is leaving the earth, going into the spiritual realm, and bringing it back into the earth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Isn't that how giving is? We sow in the natural. We sow in the spirit so it can manifest in the natural. We sow here what we're really sowing up there. Yeah. Because we got to put a seed in the heaven in order for it to come down to the earth. Come on. Faith is working. Faith has promised us this. Let faith have her work. <laughs> Ooh, okay, all right. They ain't shout yet. We're about to shout though. In that hour, the enemy talk. In that hour, the haters talk. In that hour, you even talk. Your inner me begin to talk. See, we convince ourselves more than the enemy does. Because we can close the enemy off at any time. Come on. He's outside. He's not inside. But the real enemy is inside of us. Is us. We begin to talk to our own self. And then blame it on the devil. Yeah, you know, you're convincing yourself out of that. You're talking your own self out of that. It's like going in for a job interview. And then you look at the uh, other people around. They dressed up, got a suit, look like uh, you talking to them. And they, they talk about their engineers and uh, 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 all kind of uh, certifications and all that. And you begin to talk yourself out of the job. Before you. you even went in. It is for you. It's already for me. It's already mine. I'm going in and say, hey, y'all go home, buddy. That's right. <laughs> this job is mine. It's already taken. I go in the interview. Look here. Uh, you don't even need to interview nobody else. I'm the one for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got the qualification. And if I don't have it, I got the will and desire. How do to make it manifest? You can't get a better employee than I am. You begin to speak those things and be not as though they were. Yeah. You let faith promise you and faith that you want to get the job, go in there with the job. Don't go in there and say, oh, oh man, they, they, they graduated from this school and, and they graduated from that school and, and I can't compete with all that. No, you can't. But with God, all things is possible. He can take you from the bottom and put you on the top. Because the word said the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He can, he can swap this thing on you. He can change places with you. Switch it out. <laughs> you never know how he's going to work it. But you know he's going to work it, though. <laughs> See, I don't need the details. <laughs> I just need it to, to manifest. I just need the results. I, I, I ain't going to sit there and micromanage God. Hmm. Come on. I ain't got to figure out what God is doing. Just let God do his part. He got that. And I do my part by walking in faith. Amen. <laughs> well, somebody need to hear that. Uh, get I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Well, let, let's go to one more. One more scripture. Let's go to where we started off at. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. Oh, I, I ain't say that one yet? What's 23? You want 23? And when Jesus came in the rural house, he saw the mistress and the people making a noise. That's what you wanted. 
No, no. <laughs> this is going into another faith talking, though. That whole chapter, hallelujah, dealt with miracles after miracles after miracles. Because you had Jared's daughter, you had, uh, 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 you had a woman with, uh, with the issue. And where Jesus was going at, faith was just getting to promise people stuff. And he showed up mm, where faith promised. <laughs> oh, come on. I see he showed up where faith promised. Yes. Faith moved God. I told y'all before that faith is the currency of the kingdom. And you can't, you can't negotiate without faith. We found Abraham back there negotiating about Sodom and Gomorrah. With God, pray eventually, Lord, if it's 50, if it's 45, if it's 30. He sat there uh, 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 negotiating with faith. Hey, hey look here. My faith may, may not be the 50. Let it get down to 45. But Lord, bless the 45. Well, he ain't there yet, Lord, 30 then. He ain't there yet, 20, Lord. But I, I want to negotiate with my faith. I believe in God. You got somebody righteous in there that you can save the city. First Kings, 17 chapter, verse 9. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to Zarephath now. We're going down there where a woman uh, began to do a faith promise. She began to activate her faith because it promised her. Watch this. In uh, first, se um, first Kings 17 chapter and verse 9. Arise. Now this is him. Who? Who's talking? This God talking, right? And he's talking to the prophet, right? What he's telling the prophet? He said, Arise, go get ye to Zaphat, which belong to what? Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to do what? Sustain. To sustain you. That is deep. Sustain you. In other words, God's saying, Look here, prophet, I'm sending you someplace. And you have to see the prophet got to work on faith just like the, what he promised, what he prophesied. He believed it by faith. He speak about faith. But he also got to exercise faith. Amen. Mm, okay. And he rose and did what? Verse um, 10. And Elijah, so he arose, Elijah arose and went to Zarephath. And when Elijah came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Y'all ever wonder how he knew who she was? This could have been, it's not like he's wearing this widow walk around with a label on her back. Unless maybe her garment had described who she was. But it could have been more than one widow out there. But faith got a way of, of, of talking to the man and woman of God. Faith got a way of showing up and letting you know it's there. Look at him. And he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a little woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. If she didn't activate it, then this couldn't be the one. In other words, I ain't talking to you. If what the words I'm speaking to you ain't moving you, I ain't talking to you. Okay. You couldn't be the one that uh, uh, God has sent to sustain me. Because the one God has sent to sustain me, how are we going to move according to the word? Ain't going to sit there and wrestle with it. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to talk up in here today. All right, let's go to verse 10. So he arose, I mean verse 11. And as she was going, as she was going to what? Fetch it. I told y'all, come on. Now, that, that would have test us in nowadays. If I don't test, test, test them back then, but someone tell you to fetch something. Hey, who are you talking to? Fetch. Tell me to fetch. Do I look like a dog? <laughs> but see, we the one that, we get caught up in the words that the, the man or woman or the prophet or the prophet is used to speak in our life. We get caught up in it. And maybe they didn't use the correct word. Maybe their vocabulary was limited. 
But you should have still know that it's ain't go get it. I ain't, I, I barely know you. I, I just walked up here. <laughs> I just showed up in your life. And already you getting uh you getting all out in your feelings about it because I use a word that you thought was offensive, but I had no offense in it. Just because your mama told you to go fetch stuff. And you built up a resentment for that word. And now when I come along and use that word, see, the words can tell a lot about a person. What they are dealing with. But this woman had no problem with it. She said, what she did. And then she was going to fetch it, right? You know, he said, go fetch it. She went to go fetch it. She didn't sit there and debate about, it. well, you know, we we in a drought. We only got a little bit of water. You want me to go and fetch a little bit of water? If God is asking you for a little bit, guess what? A lot is coming. Amen. <laughs> I said, if God is asking you for a little bit, a lot is following. A lot is coming. You might be in a shortfall now. You might be in a drought now. But I hear the sound of abundance rain. Yes. Because if I'm activating it and I'm giving it to God, God's about to release, oh Lord. He's about to open up the cloud. He's about to open up the sky. He's about to pour down upon you. Amen. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, mm, wait a minute, I see you got faith. Because you're moving in a little. I, I see you got faith. Let me add on to it. Oh Lord, wait a minute, Pastor. I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> this is how some of us are in nowadays. Once you start adding on to it, see, he wouldn't ask you if he didn't think you could do it. If he didn't think you could produce it. And so when he asked for the little of water, when he asked for the water, she moved in that. But here was a challenge of her faith to another level when he asked her, wait a minute, hold up, I pray thee. Uh, can I have a morsel of bread in thy hand? He began to add on to it. Wait a minute. I just gave you a little bit. Now you asking for some more? Because I see you got more faith in you. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. See, y'all want to stay on a low, little or a low level, but God see more inside of you, so he asks more out of you. Much, no much is required. It's much more in you. Activate some more faith inside of you. So as he was going to get that, he put some more on. Be like, hey, goodness. So y'all don't need to get mad if there's more of a demand on you. And it seems like it's always on you. That's right. Because God got more for you. Now you can stay on that one level and get the water. And guess what? You're going to get rain on. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what about the meal? What about the oil? Well, what about the other stuff that needs to sustain you? Mm. And so he said, look, you activated in that area of your faith. Now I need to see you activate in this area of your faith. You activate in the water level. Now let's see you activate in the bread level. Okay. Come on. Go to the next one. Oh, my. Hallelujah. My, 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 my book want to change on me. And, and he said, and, and as she said, as the Lord God lived, I have not, what? A cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks. She said, I've been out here all day, searching for the stick, and I only got two of them. In other words, she's in a bad condition. You got you to gotta be in a bad condition. But guess what? She wasn't always like that. How do I know? Because she said, but a handful of meal in a barrel. If you got a barrel, that means that one time you had a lot more. Right. Nobody keep a, a handful of a, a, a sugar in a in a in a big barrel. You know, you you kind of ration the uh, the container to the what you got. That you need to hold it in, right? Whatever you need to contain it in. If you got a little sugar, then you might put that little sugar in a little cup. Mm -hmm. All right. But she had a barrel at one time. How it, oh, y'all don't want to hear this. See, I, he want to bring you back to your barrel days. You was in a light. 
<laughs> you was in a shortfall, but God want to bring you back into abundance time. Oh, what you mean? God can restore all that the canker worms at, all that the pummel worms at, all that the locusts at. Hello. He can restore back unto you all that was taken from you. All that you was going through in this drought, all that you was going in this famine, all that you was going in this recession, God's about to restore it to you. Yes. But you got to take the seed in your hand and offer it up so God can give you your harvest. Amen. Baby, your harvest is in your hand. Now I need a seed out of your harvest. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he said, a little oil in your cruise. And behold, I am gathering you sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Yeah, that might be your plan, but it ain't God's plan. You might think it's over for you. You might think your expiration date is up. You might think you can't come out of this situation. But God has already sent you a word that's going to deliver you out of it. Only thing you got to do is activate it. <laughs> Only thing you got to do is walk in it. Only thing you got to do is fetch it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all I got. I'm going to stop telling people, fetch it. Fetch it with your faith. Fetch it with your faith. That's all you got to do is fetch it. Watch this. Verse 13. Hallelujah. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Mm. See, fear what keeps us in the little. Fear what keeps us in the bottom of the barrel. Fear what keeps us in the handful. Fear what keeps us in the little hole. Fear them. You know, it goes against your faith. The Bible says we walk by faith. Faith and not by sight, right? Amen. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, fear right? But he given us what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Come on. So therefore, faith and fear works opposite of each other. Fear is false evidence appearing real. It ain't even real. It's what you done made up in your own head. She thinking she gonna die because she was fearing she ain't had enough after this power. But she didn't know that God saw what she didn't have and God was providing for what she needed. Yes. It was coming. Y'all just gonna realize that God knows what you need and God got a plan for it. Yes. Just operate in faith. He said, fear not, go and do as thou hast saved, which was what? Fetch it with your faith. <laughs> But make me therefore a little cake first. In other words, give it to God first. And bring it unto me. And afterward make for thee and for thy son. Oh man, we couldn't, we, we couldn't deal with this scripture in our days. Hello. Oh no. Uh -uh. Not in our days. Give to the give to the man or woman of God first. Give it to the church first. Come on. No. I'll make sure my children eat first. Well, if you don't eat first, at least you should eat first and then let your children eat after you. Because if you die, then who will take care of your kids? Oh, I know that was horrible right there. Because we're like, I'm, I'm going to make sure me and mine eat first. Hold up. You need to make sure you take care of God who is your provider. Not that he need it, but he wants your faith. See, God don't need your stuff. He needs your faith. That's right. In order for him to bless you, he needed your faith to be activated. So she said, bring it to me first. Give it to me first. You put it in my hand first. Because I have come to sustain you while you sustain me. Because the words I'm speaking in your life is going to bring forth life. The words she was speaking in her life was bringing forth death. The woman had gotten to a point in her life where the stuff she was talking about was disrupted to her. What did she say? Me and my son going to eat this little cake and die, right? She done got to a point in her mind where she was thinking, she was speaking negative. And God needed to change that in her life. And so he brought a person of faith into her life. Hallelujah. And watch this. And bring her to me and after, after make for thee and for thy son. Verse 14. Watch 14. 
For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the barrel ooh, a meal shall what? Hallelujah. It went from a handful back to a barrel. Because once God spoke over it, through his prophet, through his messenger, it had to be performed. <laughs> he said, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of all fail. In other words, I'm compounding your little into a lot now. And it's going to be enough to sustain you and your son. Yes. And whoever else who comes into your house. Hello. This one we're going to have meal for people. people I'm pretty sure. Uh, family, friends, and cousins, and long-time people who, 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 who was talking about her before, now showed up because she had a meal. Hello? Because you remember now that there was no rain upon the land for three and a half years. This was going to be a, a long-term famine. Hallelujah. She kind of turned down number six or seven, just a little bit, a slider. I'm getting a little feedback. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the one with the light beat, isn't it? Okay, all right, that's good. Yes, that's it. So, um, thank you. And so, when you're in a blessed season, people start coming unto you. Hello. And so she started to have more folks show up. But God had, a, God was like, you know what? Even though you're going to be giving to others, I'm still going to be giving it to you. Amen. Even though you share it, I'm still going to be pouring it out. Because he said the barrel should not wait. He didn't say what she had to do with it. He put no restrictions on it. She could give it out to the whole city if she wants to. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to talk. God would have still supplied the barrel. She could have been baking uh, cakes and having a cake giveaway. And guess what? The barrel still would not have waste. Ooh, what do you say? Don't start hoarding stuff when God start blessing you. Okay. Man. Stop sowing it again. <laughs> Stop planting it again. Because remember, that seed in your hand is going to be in the harvest later. Amen. And your harvest is going to be according to the seed you put out. Yeah. So you put a small seed, don't expect a big harvest. <laughs> ooh, okay. I, I think I'm about to. Uh, uh, ooh, Jesus, hallelujah. Until the day that the Lord sent rain upon earth. So there was an expiration date on this blessing. Mm -hmm. Because he was going to have enough to sustain her. Because God was like, look here. I need you to take care of my prophet. Was that not the purpose of him going there? Because God sent the prophet to our house. To do what? To be sustained by the widow. Who didn't have none. But God was going to supply. Because the man of God was in our life. Don't discount your pastors. Don't discount your man or woman of God. God has placed them in your life for a reason. Don't be a vagabond. Don't believe that you don't need a covering. Don't believe that you don't need a man or woman, someone speaking into your life. Because he said, I do nothing in this earth unless I speak to my prophets. So if he ain't doing nothing without going through his prophet, you need someone who will be able to speak into your life. Well, you know, we ain't have to go to church. We can have church right here. We can just pray right here. We can sing a couple songs. Hallelujah. That way we ain't got to give no offering. We can sit right here. That's why on Sunday, ooh, I don't know why the Lord dropped that one just now. Hallelujah. When Christmas is on a Sunday this year, people ain't going to go to church. Because they're like, it's a holiday, it's Christmas. Well, who are you celebrating on that day? Well, who are you supposed to be celebrating on that day? I, hold on, wait a minute. If it's Christ's birthday, you know, the day they set aside for his birthday, because we know he was born, and we know he died, and we also know he was resurrected. Hallelujah. Even though he had no beginning, but in the natural, he had a beginning. And, and so they gave a date, uh, the 25th of December. Why wouldn't you show up for his birthday? Why wouldn't you celebrate where his party is at? His party gonna be over there where y'all 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 got all those you know the whole liquor store in your house and talking about well let's let's first pray over the food and, and then we could that's 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 about the limit that's about the limit of you even acknowledging him on that day oh come on y'all yeah, want to talk but people are like well why we gotta come to church on Christmas because it's Christ's 
must? Is Christ must? Is Christ day? <laughs> Why wouldn't you show up on this day? Oh, come on. You got people falling off from that because they don't believe in uh, 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 the fellowshipping. They don't believe in that you have to have someone to speak into their life. They don't, well, I go and get the word for myself. Yeah, you could, but you ain't reading your word. Quit acting like you are, you know you're not. Hello, anybody quote some scripture and post something they don't copy off another person's page and put it up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or whatever your social media is. Come on. Hallelujah. You ain't even ready. You just copy and paste. Yeah. Or just share. <laughs> Ooh. But to take your word up and read it for yourself. To study it for yourself. Amen. All right, I'm about to finish. Last two verses. And send forth rain into the earth. So there's expiration on this. It, it, he say, I'm not going to let it. Because a lot of people say, well, the barrel all never ran out in the in the um, meal never ran out. The crude oil in the meal never ran out. But it say, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So this was a divine um, blessing. It was divine intervention on this. God sent this to sustain her because Elijah wasn't going to stay there forever. So she would have to learn to activate her faith even when he go. Oh, come on. So verse 6 to 15. Watch this. For, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he in her house <laughs> did eat what? Many days. Why? Because she did what? She didn't deviate. She didn't went and just brought back water. She didn't went and say, well, I'm just going to eat my cake first and then give it what's left over. She did according to what he said. Amen. When God is speaking to us, we need to do it according to what he says. Mm -hmm. Quit listening to what people say and let people talk you out of what God is saying. Mm -hmm. You ever heard people say, well, I know the Lord sent me to the church and, 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 and then all of a sudden, a, a month later, they go. Yeah. If God sent you there, he ain't sent you there for a month. <laughs> I really don't think God just sent you there for more. Especially when you say, this is your home. I, I know God sent me here. The, this is my home church or, or wherever, your home ministry, whatever you call it. But then all of a sudden, when the word comes forth and start chastising you, you're ready to go. You know, we got these relationships now. Soon as we don't like it, we get a divorce out of it. That's right. So we divorce it. And God ain't never told you to leave, but because... You decided you wanted to go because you upset with folks. Well, God knew you could have it when he, he assigned you here or wherever he assigned you at. But we get caught up in our feelings. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elijah could say, like, you know, man, Lord, why you send me down here? But he did what God said do. And then the woman was like, why are you sending this man? I want to screech in my house. Even though he's a preacher, I still don't want him in my house. But she did what God said do. And because of that, they all were blessed. Verse 16, and we're going to close out. Hallelujah. I hope I'm helping someone. Faith promised and faith shall deliver. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of all fail. According to the word of the Lord, which he spat by Elijah. In other words, faith promised it, faith manifested, and it was done. That's it. When faith promises, it, it shall be done. It shall manifest. We could have known whether it was God or not. If she, if she would have gave Elijah that cake, and then out the end, and uh, the boy and, the, uh, and her at that piece, and then they would have went back to look for more, and none was there, then we know it wasn't God. What God said will manifest. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Because what faith promised, faith shall deliver. That's right. Remember, we started off with a woman who was talking to herself about being whole. Because faith promised her that before she even touched him. Wow. God was dealing with that woman because she had to have the spirit and she had to have faith in order to know it was God 
that was speaking to her when he told her to go fetch it in the first place. Hello? To know she ain't never met, I don't think she had met Elijah before. He sent her down to Zarephath to a particular widow. Hello? But faith connects with faith. Faith know when faith show up. Let me tell you something. You can tell when someone got some faith around off. Stand up. One that have one eye closed, the other eye open, peeping around, looking at everybody else. Yeah, that ain't faith working right there. Faith to have you in another place. That's right. <laughs> you, you, as a matter of fact, you don't even know what's going on with everybody else. It's, you just, you and God there. Talk to me, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. And we can see that kind of faith. But you know what? I have learned not to look at your face when I'm praying. <laughs> yeah, I'll close my eyes. Because I don't want to discern your natural. <laughs> I want to hear God speaking to your spirit. I'm going to leave that one alone too then. But faith promised, faith shall deliver. Amen. The beautiful about, part about it, faith don't fail. It doesn't fail us like that. Come on. You'll fail, but faith won't fail like that. When you got faith in God, it's going to come to pass. Yes, it will. If it's according to his word, it's going to manifest. All these promises in the Bible, we just need to activate our faith. Because it's promised to us to be the head and not the tail. That's promised to us. It ain't just something you can quote, but it's something you need to activate your faith on. To be the lender and not the borrower? Come on. How many of y'all has been the lender this year? Somebody long lent me enough to get an Afghan. I, I was a reluctant borrower, though, because I want to be the lender. <laughs> and the only reason I was a lender because I wasn't there, and they had to put the order in. Come on, y'all don't want to talk right there. I, I, the borrower is at the uh, 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 the mercy of the lender. All of a sudden, the lender said, well, I'm going to increase the rate. No, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the borrower is just at their mercy. That's why y'all get charged 30, 40, 50, 60, 100% on these loans at these different places. But faith promised, faith shall deliver. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we're going to close right there. Zarephath, that woman, had faith. Faith promised, and she activated. We all must activate our faith. We all must walk in our faith. Amen. You can't get nothing out of God without faith. You can't move mountains without faith. I want to be a mountain mover, but I don't have no mountain faith. When you expect for the mountain to go. He's even speaking to that sick mind tree. And it'll get up, out of, pull up his roof and get cast into the sea. That's faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we pray, God, that those that came in on Facebook Live who was able to stay the whole hour, I know probably lost some during the course of 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes our church spans like long, and sometimes you get distracted because you're home. And there's so many things that can distract you. And that's why we encourage you to come out. Be, a, be, be in the service. Just don't come across Facebook Live, uh, you know, for those who are able to get here, because then you won't have no distractions of it. And if you're going to do it live, then block out everything else. Don't have the Facebook live on and the TV on and let these two things compete with one another. You know, shut it down as if you were in church. Isn't it? Amen. So uh, we thank God for you. Um, and as we say before, as is listed on the, um, on the page itself, if you want to make a monetary donation, you can. Just go to our website and click, click the giving button and then hit donate and you can donate through PayPal there. We will appreciate it. We, um, we appreciate every 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 seed that you sow into this ministry. We thank you for su your support. Uh, without your support, we couldn't do the things we do do. So we're thanking God for you. And we hope that the word has encouraged you and we'll see you next week. Have a blessed day, Facebook Live. Bye-bye. All right. So
Vamos.